This is an overview of symbols that are used to create exact transcriptions of how people are speaking. A square bracket is used to indicate the moment when two people are speaking at once. Here, the moment when Eric says the word remember, while he's still saying the last syllable, Jared is already speaking. Notice that we line up those brackets to, so that the moment when the, the, the things that are being said at the same time are lined up. The equal symbol can be used to indicate that there's no pause. Here, at the very moment when Jared is done saying the word morning, Eric is saying smell of napalm. So there is no pause there at all. Also no overlap. It's just timed exactly right. But if there is a short pause, then we indicate it like this. For example, here at the end of Jared's utterance, there's a slight pause before Eric begins speaking. And Eric is not saying, yeah, I do. He's saying, yeah, I do. If the pause is longer, we indicate the length in seconds. For example, I'm not done. This has been months. And then silence for this duration of time, 1001, 1002. The audience is laughing during that time. Sometimes it's relevant to indicate that there's laughter or audible breathing. And these two things are often, actually, they sound the same. So the letter H is used for that. Here, for example, the person is going, hey, 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 something like that. A little chuckle can occur in the middle of a word. For example, here's the deal. Notice that it's not the same to say, here's the deal, than it is to say, here's the deal. And sometimes it's relevant to indicate that chuckle there. Now, capitalization and punctuation marks are not used in the same way as they are normally in writing. We do not capitalize the initial uh, letters in sentences. Capital letters are used to indicate increased volume. For example, you've done this to me now seven times. The question mark is used to indicate rising intonation. So pitch is going up. For example, I think it's five years of footage that we go through. And a slash is used for falling intonation. Now, how about questions? Please remember that the question mark is not automatically used for every question. You do normally have it the way that people normally uh, say yes, no questions. Here, here we have, did you see that with rising intonation? Somebody could say it with falling intonation. Did you see that? I think it's less likely, but they might. We want to capture the difference. So with yes, no questions, the normal case is to have high, uh, rising intonation, and we'd put a question mark on it. But with WH questions, the normal case is to have falling intonation. What do you mean? Not, what do you mean? Somebody could say, what do you mean? But that would be a little unusual, and it has extra meaning. Why? Why? This is the more usual case, why? But somebody might say, why? Notice the difference. So we use question marks not because there is a question. We use question marks to indicate rising intonation when transcribing. A comma is used to indicate a slight rise, which indicates that the person probably intends to continue to say more stuff. As in, I, I got to say, I always love when you come by. It's not quite a rising intonation, but it sounds as though he's not finished with what he's saying. A colon is used to indicate a lengthened sound. For example, never said hippity in the second line there. And if we have trouble hearing, figuring out what a person's saying in a recording, then we can just indicate the best guess. For example, in the second line, I think the person said anyway, I'm not sure though. And sometimes you can't even make a guess, but you can hear how many syllables are there. So in that third line, very something here in my life. Um, there's something I can't make out at all. I can't even guess, but I can tell it's just one syllable. So I'm indicating that. And we use this to indicate that there's some comment here. For example, takes pen and paper is not what anyone said, but it's a comment from the person transcribing. So these are the symbols that we often use.